morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our service of worship here at Knox United Church in Kenora, Ontario. My name is Bruce Graham and I'll be your worship presider today. My pronouns are he and him. This is the last Sunday in June, so it also marks the last Sunday in Pride Month. In a normal year, Pride Month would have been celebrated with festivals and parades and all manner of activity. But this year, thanks to COVID, very little of that was allowed to happen. So today in our worship service, we will celebrate Pride and show our support for all those in the LGBTQ2S plus community. Pride is celebrated for the month of June, but our support for Pride goes on all year. Now, let us hold silence as the candles in the colors representing the pride flag and our Christ candle are lit. As Christians and people of faith, each Sunday we come together to give praise and thanks to God, to a God who created and continues to create. And we marvel in the diversity that's represented in the, the world and the nature that God created. And as we celebrate pride, we celebrate and marvel in a diversity that has been created amongst the peoples of God. The variety of colors, the variety of genders, the variety of sexual orientations. And we remember that all people are created by God, perfect creations, and that all are created equal and all are deserving of love, 
and humanity, dignity, and respect. So let us praise and give thanks to the God of diversity. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, love that will not let us go, our hearts are filled with joy, deep love, and overflowing gratitude. We are thankful for the gifts of all affirming ministries and communities of faith who open their churches, their homes, and their hearts to two-spirit and LGBTQ plus people and all their intersecting identities for music, friendship, and for family. We are thankful for the love that will not let us go. 
We are thankful for Pride Marches and Pride Month for all those who publicly, internationally, and explicitly affirm that 25 LGBTQ plus people are children of God. We are thankful, most of all, for the blessing of a love that is and always has been there for us. The truth at the heart of our faith that you are love echoes today in words and in music, in friendships and family, in our hearts and minds, and continues to challenge us to love. We pray for our hearts and minds to be open to our own homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia, to be open to our own racism, sexism, ableism, sizeism, and all the ways we fear those who are different than us. We pray how to learn to recognize the kinship between our souls and the souls of those who, to us, are strangers. We pray that we will never cease in our journey to learn how to love more radically. We pray in the name of the love that flips tables and cracks whips, the love that heals those judged by religious leaders and powers, the love who lives and loves among the marginalized and outcast. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, in the words that Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I find that inspirations for my reflections come from a variety of sources. And my inspiration for today's reflection actually came from a walk that I took back in May. One morning I was out for a walk and as I was coming across the Cameron Bay Bridge towards the Discovery Centre, there was a person coming in the opposite direction. We met about halfway across the bridge and this person told me that if I was lucky, I might see a couple of turtles on the road just in front of the Discovery Center. They told me that there was two small painted turtles there when they passed, but that they had enlisted the help of a couple of other people to take these turtles and put them back in the water. They wished me a pleasant day and we departed on our separate ways. But as I continued my walk, a thought occurred to me. Why would that person assume that those turtles needed to be put back in the water? And even if they did need to be put back in the water, why would that person assume that they needed assistance with that? Now, I don't know a whole bunch about turtles, but I do know that they're pretty capable of taking care of themselves. If they were able to get out of the water and up onto the road, I'm pretty confident that they would be able to get back off of the road and into the water. What I do know about turtles, I've learned from observing the turtles around our house. Every year, turtles will come up onto our lawn and our driveway and dig holes, attempting to lay eggs, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But when they finish, they go away. They go back to the water or wherever they go to. I don't know. And in the times that we have observed successful laying of eggs and hatching, the little turtles emerge and they find their way to the water. They don't need our help, they don't need our assistance. Now, I don't know if the mothers, when they're coming up to lay the eggs, lay down some sort of a pheromone trail that the, the babies are able to detect even months later, or if the babies have some type of built-in GPS that automatically directs them to the water. I don't know, but I do know that they're able to do all of this by themselves without our help. And when I think about the encounter with this person and the turtles, I'm guessing that they really didn't know much more about turtles than I did. 
They thought that they were helping the turtles by putting them back in the water. But the truth is, they couldn't be sure. They could have actually been doing harm. Maybe the turtles came out of the water on their way to lay eggs. Now, it was a little bit early in the season, but we don't know. Maybe the turtles were moving from one part of the lake to another, and they chose the path across the road as the best path. Whatever the case, by interfering with that, by assuming that they needed help, this person may have inadvertently been doing harm to the turtles. So I went home, and I talked to my family a little bit about it. And then I was online shopping for t-shirts. Now you might ask, why was I doing that? Well, I'll tell you. The last service that I did was on Mother's Day, and I was wearing this same shirt. And after the service, Peter Fox sent me an email saying that he enjoyed the service and he was looking forward to seeing what my next t-shirt would say. Well, truth be told, I really only have two t-shirts. I have this one and I have the red one that says, keep calm and trust God. So I thought I should order some more t-shirts. But then I thought, if I'm doing the service on, at the end of June, which is Pride Sunday, I probably should look for some shirts that support Pride. So that's what I was doing. Unfortunately, I, I did order some, but they haven't arrived, so I'll have to save those for another Sunday. But while I was looking at the thousands of choices of t-shirts supporting the Pride movement, I came across one that struck me rather strongly. It was a t-shirt, and on it, it had the transgender pride flag, and it had the words, make no assumptions. And it reminded me of my encounter with the person in the turtles. We like to make assumptions. We like to think that we know things or we can make conclusions about things even when we're not really sure, okay? But this shirt brought home the truth to me. We can't make assumptions based on a person's appearance or their behavior, the way they look, the way they sound. Just because a person is a male or female in physical appearance doesn't necessarily mean that they identify as a male or female from a gender perspective. To put it another way, it's not the packaging that's important, it's the contents of the package that's important. And as I was thinking of this, I thought of the old expression, when you assume, you make an ass of you and me. But then again, I found another t-shirt that brought this phrase more up to date, more in, in current context. And the shirt said, correction, when you assume you make an ass of you in front of me. When we make assumptions about a person's gender or sexual orientation based on their physical appearance or their, their behavior, their characteristics, we could be putting ourselves in a position where we embarrass them where we embarrass ourselves. There's always that awkward moment when they have to explain to us, no, I'm not that, or I am this. But more importantly, when we make assumptions and we speak these assumptions to that person, we could actually be doing harm to the person. Think about some of the common assumptions that we make about people. We see a, a young female person and we say, Oh, I don't understand why someone as pretty as you hasn't attracted a, a man by now. It's a common assumption, but perhaps this person has no interest in having a soulmate. Perhaps this person has no attraction to men. We don't know. A young couple gets married and we say to them, Oh, I bet your parents are so excited they'll, they'll finally get to have grandchildren. We don't know the background. Maybe this couple has decided we have no interest in having children. Who would want to bring children into a world like this? And maybe when they've voiced these concerns to their parents, it's caused strife, it's caused grief. And it could be a very sore point with both the parents and with the, the children, and us bringing it up could open up some old wounds. Perhaps it's a case where the couple knows that they're not capable of having children, and by us bringing it up, it makes them feel less than normal, less than perfect, substandard even. So it's important that we don't simply voice our assumptions. 
And the reason that we make assumptions often is because we don't understand, we don't have the knowledge. And when we don't have understanding, when we don't have knowledge, that can create misunderstandings, it can create fear, it can create even hatred. And as a society, we need to get more comfortable talking about issues of gender identity, sexual orientation, and all manner of things like that. When I was growing up, going through public school and, and high school, our sex education classes were pretty simple. There were boys, there were girls. Boys were supposed to like girls. Girls were supposed to like boys. Boys and girls got married. Boys and girls had children. If our teachers were really feeling adventurous and brave, we might talk a little bit about homosexuality. But it wasn't a common topic. We fast forward 40 some years, and now we understand that there's not just male and female. There's a whole spectrum across the gender identity basis. And people can place themselves anywhere on that. One of the t-shirts that I saw said, my pronouns haven't even been invented yet. And I think that's a statement to how our understanding of human psychology and human nature and everything like that is evolving. As we move forward, we need to be open to the idea that people are going to identify in the ways that they feel comfortable identifying. You may have noticed that I didn't include any scripture with today's service. That was a deliberate choice. I think too many times the Bible has been used to attack and condemn members of the LGBTQ2S plus community. So even finding verses that, in my view, might show support, those may be of little comfort. So rather than me give you scripture, what I would invite you to do is find scriptures that resonate with you, that speak to you, that you can relate to, that make sense to you. And read those on your own and incorporate those into your understanding of pride and the LGBTQ2S plus community. Okay? So rather than focus on scripture, on the words, as a Christian, what I would like to focus on is the philosophy and the ideals. Christ's ministry was about one thing above all else. Love. He said we should love God with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our soul, and with all our minds. And he said we should love others as we love ourselves. One of his final commands to his disciples was to love each other. When Jesus looked at people, he didn't focus on their exteriors. He didn't focus on their packaging. He focused on their interiors, on who they were, rather than on what they appeared to be. And when he did that, he found people worthy of love, worthy of compassion, worthy of respect, and worthy of dignity. So if there's only one teaching of Jesus that we would hold on to, I pray that it be this, to love each other. If we consider all people with the attitude that they are wonderful and marvelous creations of God, perfectly created to be who they are, and that they are worthy of our love, worthy of our compassion, worthy of our respect, and worthy of being treated with dignity, wouldn't that make for a wonderful world? When we think about relationships, when we think about gender, sexual orientation, I think it can be boiled down to these final thoughts. If each of us as individuals can find someone who is worthy of our love and whose love we are worthy of in return, and if our mutual love strengthens and nurtures each of us, 
always healing, never harming. That is all that matters. Happy Pride. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Constant friend, because people of every sexual orientation, gender expression, and gender identity have the right to live with dignity and without persecution or discrimination, we remember in our prayers LGBTQ plus people of Chechnya, Uganda, Zambia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and elsewhere who have been murdered and tortured because of who they are. We remember them and the people who love them. LGBTQ plus refugees from around the world seeking safety and sanctuary. We remember them and the people who welcome them. Trans and gender diverse people in Canada, the United States, Brazil, and elsewhere who are targeted victims of hate crimes and assaults. We remember them and the people who love them. LGBTQ plus people whose dignity and self-esteem have been eroded by hateful systems and structures. 
we remember them and seek to be people who love more fully. Individually, we each uniquely reflect your glory and express your love, but anti-gay violence, homophobia, and transphobia have blocked many from recognizing your beauty in all people. All of creation suffers from the effects of such hate, fear, and violence. Daily, may we dedicate ourselves to building bridges of love and hope where harmful divisions have been made, making equity for all people our goal, while working continually for justice, so that everyone can live fully in your love. Amen. As you go forth from here, go with open heart and open mind. Go in celebration of the wonderful diversity that God has created in us and around us. Go with pride. Amen. Mm -hmm.